So here's another simulation I've made uh, using Desmos. Uh, if you want to try it yourself, just go to this address here. Or uh, this is the code you need if you had trouble seeing it. So one of the things I like about Desmos is anybody that has that link essentially has that graph. I'm pretty sure the parameters all get stored in a database. It's pretty slick. So here you have two projectiles. The red one was launched at 60 degrees and the blue one was launched at 30 degrees. Let's hit play and see what happens. It's like a simulation where you can see the projectiles going through the air. What you're actually seeing is a parametric equation. So the red path, for example, um, if we skip past all the values, uh, you can graph this parametrically, meaning the x is a function of time and the y is a function of time, and it graphs that over a domain or a range and amount of time you specify. I also have uh, the same thing essentially, but um, as a function of not the variable t time, but the global variable t, which acts like a simulation. So that's giving us um, a dot that we'll see. So when we fast forward the time and you see that red dot, that's where that came from. That's an individual point. It depends on this global time. Now I am assuming that the projectile goes up and then comes back down and that the lowest point here is uh, essentially the ground. That's where it's, it's going to land. If that's the case, it computes for you the actual values for a lot of the most common projectile questions. Things like the range, the maximum height, time of flight, time up, time down, uh, downward velocity when it lands, angle when it lands, stuff like that. Uh, same thing for the blue projectile, the second projectile. And we can turn these on or off by clicking or unclicking the folder. Uh, the way you control the launch itself is you have parameters. The A for the angle, so you got angle 1, angle 2, initial velocity, initial horizontal position if you want to. I made G10 here to make math easy, but you can make it anything you want. Uh, components, all that good stuff uh, you can control there. Now, as you run your simulation, sometimes you want to see, well, what are the values at the moment? So I can drag this red dot, which will uh, move the time forward, as will the blue. And you can see the X and Y position of each changing. Now, that lets us do some neat things. Like, have you ever wondered if we could get this projectile to hit this projectile if they're fired towards one another? So if I wanted to do that, I might make the initial parameter, instead of being 30 degrees, I may make the red one go to 150 degrees, which is like a 30 degree launch to the left. But then I'm going to have to shift it over to the right. So I'm going to take X1. I'm going to move that over this way. And now I can move this and sort of play around with, well, well that's actually pretty good. Wow, I'm impressed with myself. Let's see how close we actually came with those parameters. So if we go back up here and close the launch parameters and look at the current values, the current X's are really, really close, and the current Y is actually literally the same thing, which it always will be because it's the same angle of launch, same speed. Uh, but you can see where they cross. Now that would be a lot messier to do uh, if you were just doing it as a problem by hand. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing you can do. Sometimes you just want to look at one projectile and see how it changes. So let me turn off the red path here. Uh, I'm going to pinch zoom because I'm on a touch screen. I can do that. I'm going to look at the blue here. And let's see what happens if we change the parameters here. So blue is the second one. So if I change that angle, raise it up, you can see that changes accordingly. And we know when you land at the same height, 45 degrees gives you the most range. And if you put this at 45, you can see... That is indeed the case, because if I get smaller, you get a smaller range. Now, a question that comes up often is, well, what if we have an elevated launch? That is, what if instead of being launched from the ground, we launch it from some cliff somewhere? So the way I would enter that is in the Y here for Y2, I'm going to make it start at some height. And now what you'll find is the uh, optimal angle is no longer 45 degrees. It's going to be um, something somewhat more than that. You can see that's a little, a little subtle. In fact, if we just wanted to visualize it, I can move it by hand. But something else I can do is I can make the angle go from 0 to 90 degrees, and this will play it for us. And now let's do step of 1. Hit play. Watch what happens. Ooh, that's exciting. 
Uh, but if I want to watch it a little more slowly, I can do that. Um, so there's really a lot of flexibility here. If you want to see how it changes with the velocity, maybe you want to see what happens with the red projectile still showing. You can uh, you can see all that. Now again, as we move time or as we uh, move this, you can see the current values of the projectile. So I used to do this in a spreadsheet, and I still do that sometimes, but there's just something so awesome about being able to interact and touch and kind of engage with the with the projectiles like this. So hopefully this uh, helps a physics teacher out there that wants to demonstrate it or wants to come up with problems or you're a student that wants to generate practice problems or, well, it's not my intended audience, but if you're just trying to answer your projectile problem without actually doing any work, this will kind of do that. Um, but I just think this is really neat. I've always been a big spreadsheet person, and I certainly still am, but I am blown away by what Desmos lets you do and how quickly it works. And it works on phones. It's HTML5. It's 